Welcome everyone to another CTC software webinar. My name is Chris Berger, Director of Technical Services here at CTC. And today we are going to go over a fun little tool within the BIM Manager Suite called Family Tools. And this is a free tool within the BIM Manager Suite. Uh, but before I begin, uh, I, I uh, wanna make sure that everybody feels free to ask questions uh, throughout the webinar using the questions panel. I will do my best to answer them as we go. And if I don't, during the presentation, we'll make sure to answer the, everything at the very end. Uh, in addition to that, we are recording this and it will be made available on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the presentation has completed. With that said, let's just jump right into it. So, if you've ever worked with content management, uh, and by content, I mean Revit family management over the years, there, there are tasks that are part of that process that can be extremely time consuming and very repetitive and oftentimes get uh, pushed to the back burner because it does take a lot of time and it does exude a lot of energy and you know the cost benefit doesn't really uh, shine through in the end. Now things like you know managing and editing and updating type catalogs or you know, getting rid of all the content, the family backups uh, that pollute any sort of family library or directory. Uh, what about shared parameters and managing your shared parameters file and parameters from other manufacturers or content that's downloaded, or maybe, God forbid, a shared parameter file that was created for a unique project. Uh, you know, what if we need to incorporate some of that stuff into our own standards, right? Like. That, that's all stuff that takes a lot of time to do by itself. So today, we're gonna show you how family tools can help you address a lot of that. So that you're not individually doing all of the in, little picks and clicks and hunting and pecking for everything. So uh, with today today's presentation, we're gonna show you for those of you that are not familiar with family tools, we're gonna to show you where everything is and uh, what's you know where to find everything inside of Revit. We'll show you how a little bit about the user, user interface, how things are broken down, you know, where everything lives, and we'll run through a couple of exercises here, cleaning up backup files, uh, managing type catalogs, uh, reviewing and messing with shared parameter files. So, and then uh, at the very end, I'll show you where you can get your hands on a copy of the tools if you don't have them already. And uh, then answer any additional questions that are at the end. So uh, we'll just get right into it. I don't like PowerPoints. So I try to stay away from them when I can. All right, so the, the issue the, I'm just going to point out a couple of things here real quick. I've, I've taken the time to consolidate a few of the things that I want to go over with you guys today. And when it comes to working with family tools, there's a couple of different things that it does for us. First one, delete managing backup files, right? If you've ever edited families and made updates and changed things or just, you know, starting from the beginning and creating something brand new, you end up with these backup files. And if you're not managing the number of backups that are created by the family itself when you save, this list can get very long, right? You might, your minimum or your maximum backup number might be set to five. So in addition to the main family that you see here, you would have potentially five other backup files. Or I think the, you know, with families, I believe, I think the default is three. So, but then if for every single family that you've ever modified or created, if you haven't cleaned them out yet. So that can be a lot, especially, you know, if you've got a library of a thousand families, that might be 3000 backup files in addition to those thousand families. 
It's a little extreme, I know, but you get the idea. It could be that bad, especially if you've never taken the time to clean it up. And I've got some tag catalogs here. So I've kind of consolidated everything to one little place to make it easier for us to find everything. And family tools will help us with the backups. And that's where we're gonna start first. Uh, so family tools is a free tool within the BIM manager suite. So if you, with the latest installer, you will find everything for manager suite on your CTC management tab on the ribbon. And I'm in Revit 23. These tools are good for Revit 24 all the way back to Revit 2020. So whatever version uh, your project or your families are in, for the most part, we can accommodate that. And uh, family tools is the freebie. Sometimes it's consolidated in this little drop down. If you expand it, you'll see family tools. Sometimes you've got them all nice and stretched out. Kind of depends on what your liking is there. So, but <clears throat> so when we fire up family tools, the the UI is going to look a little like this. And I've got some presets going here, so I'm going to clear these out just real quick. But it's broken into five kind of key areas here. We've got our backup files, type catalog tools, comparing shared parameter files. Uh, there's a a merge shared parameter file here's tool as well. And then there's a family file version detector. So we're gonna hit every single one of these tabs today, starting with the backup files. So, you know, one way that I've always done it prior to having my hands on this wonderful tool was opening up Explorer and just doing a search, star.00 star.rfa, right? Gives me all the backup files select all delete great but that you know if you've got multiple libraries or directories and depending on the organization that can all that can also take a long time so this goes a lot quicker than anything else that i would could come up with so you click browse you go find the the directory where your content is being stored so in my case it's in my little custom demo folder here that I built. And I'm just gonna grab the entire directory. It's gonna find everything within this setup here. And in this case, because I've I'm a big fan of getting rid of these backups, especially in my consumable directory, right? I don't like working there even personally. My working folder oftentimes a mess, but this helps keep my working folder a little bit cleaner too. Uh, but I'll, you find everything that you want, but default, it's already checked. So you can just turn right around and hit delete. Maybe there's a version in here that you don't want to delete. All you have to do is make sure that that box is unchecked before you hit delete on, down at the bottom here. So you, you have some, oops, excuse me. You have some flexibility here when it comes to uh, what to delete and not delete. So I'm going to delete everything. So I'm going to make sure I hit select all grabs everything here and delete. You're gonna get uh, a remind or a, a little notification. Really, you wanna do this? Yes, please, thank you. It'll tell you the number of backups that were deleted and how much free space you've gained back, which is great because it's always, in, in my mind, I mean, heart, storage space isn't usually an issue these days as much anymore as it used to be. But it's always nice to know how much garbage we just got rid of, right? Even if it didn't really matter, it's always nice to know. Uh, so there you go. And that's at least me. I, I think it's really nice knowing what's getting, how much I got rid of. So it's it's that simple, which is great. The, in my opinion, <laughs> the probably the best time saver tool in this kit is dealing with type catalogs. Now, as a, a content developer, I personally loved type catalogs. Now, for those of you who don't know what a type catalog is, when you build a, a family, say a door, and you've got the different types available for the different sizes, you know, 36 by 84, 36 by 82, whatever, you know, the list goes on. And when you load that family into a project, 
that little pop-up window appears uh, showing you uh, the different sizes that you've built out and you can pick and choose which one or ones you want to load into your project. That little pop-up window is referencing what is called the type catalog. It's built using a text file traditionally. However, uh, editing in Notepad or Notepad++ for that matter uh, is not an easy task for type catalog creation. So I build all mine using Microsoft Excel. And uh, A, it's easy to see, it's easy to reference. In a lot of cases, uh, it's easy to, you know, get the same number replicated a bunch of times if that's the case. And uh, I can do them all in one workbook or in one, in one big old Excel file. So I can have a tab for each family and manage it all from one standard location in the event that something needs to change. And it's easy to replicate across multiple tabs and the, the whole workflow just uh, changes drastically when you, when you incorporate an Excel file, in my opinion. And it makes the whole process that much easier. So now I need to take each individual tab in my Excel file and convert that to this text file so that my Revit families can consume them. To do that, we first need to take each individual tab and create a CSV file for it or a comma delimited text file. Okay. And that's so that process happens by you know making sure that you have uh, the current tab that you want to work with active. Right. So in this case, uh, I'll do this one because I, I haven't done this one yet. And with it selected here like this, I'll do a save as. And then change my file format type here to be the comma delimited CSV file. But this one up here, I believe would work, but I prefer this one down here better. It's just the basic stock one. And then it's going to show me everything that I've already got in that directory. So I've built them out before, but I need to update them. And um, now I'm going to go find the one that I had picked, which was, I believe it was that one. So we'll select it and then hit save. And it's going to overwrite the one I had in my family file folder. Yep, good. I did guess. I did pick right. So I'm going to do that one. And then I'm going to do one more. Over here, I'm going to do my CMU solid. We'll do save as. And, you know, if you needed to do all of them, just run on down the list and do them all, right? In this case, I've only got these two that need to be updated. But effectively, uh, without any extra macro or add-in for Excel, you do have to do that one tab at a time. But there are uh, developer tools, and you can add a macro or a plugin to speed that process up. So now I've got two done. If I go back to my family's or my uh, my folder here, and I'll just sort by date modified, here are the two that I just did, as you can see. And there's here's the couple. Oh, I, my test folder, I cleared out the other ones. <laughs> uh, but these are the two I just did. And now I need to convert these to our text files that you see down here. And that's where the family tools come into play. Without family tools, I physically need to, you know, delete the old text files and come up here and rename these to a .txt. And it just, it totally opens the door for uh, a missed, a typo or something, right? It, user error is very widespread when it comes to managing type catalogs with the families. Because if the names aren't matching 100% to the T, it's not gonna work and you'll, the family's not gonna function as, in, as, in, as intended. So this allows me to grab, the, just by grabbing the folder where all of these type catalogs live, and I can do them all at the same time. So if I had taken the time to walk through and uh, set, oops, and set, I didn't pick the right folder, and set this up for each and every single uh, type catalog that I had in my list, I can get them all done at the same time. 
without doing any with just by watching. So in this case, I've only got the two. So that's what the two I'm gonna check. But because <laughs> the entire list was there, I could theoretically update them all. I've only got the two, so that's what I'll do. And all it does is it copies and pastes the CSV to a text file, overwrites what's there, and now we're all done. And now, because I've got my date modified sorted, here's my, you can see that it's up to date already. So very slick, very fast, and I didn't, other than browsing to a file at this point, I didn't have to check anything else. So there's no right click, rename, you know, backspace, highlight, delete, none of that. Hope that I spelled it right or that I didn't, you know, fat finger on my keyboard and put a bunch of extra text in there. Very slick, very simple. And if you do use this format for setting up your uh, type catalog files, if your paths don't change, Family Tools is going to remember all this stuff so that once you updated the CSV files, you can just fire up Family Tools, switch to this tab, hit refresh, and then hit copy. And it's just going to constantly, it, you don't even have to go browsing for the content anymore. So that process can get real streamlined if you want it to. Again, probably one of my favorite pieces to this program, to family tools. Now, the compared shared parameters uh, feature here, this is also extremely handy, especially when you are trying to do shared parameter file review and cleanup. Uh, now, in this case, what this does is it allows you to compare two shared parameter files, okay? now. Manufacturers will supply a shared parameter file sometimes with a, to go along with their content that you may have downloaded from their website. You should have your own shared parameter file for all the custom content that you have built. And maybe if you do a government work, they may have a shared parameter file that you need to incorporate or reference. And maybe another contractor or builder or anyone else that, uh, is utilizing uh, Revit to its fullest potential may have extra parameters that they want you to reference. So you could end up with a handful of different shared parameter files here. Now, uh, ideally, we kind of want to consolidate that as best we can into one file. But at the same time, we first need to make sure that we don't have any, oops, we don't have any um, conflicts in the, in the content that we're working with or the parameters that we're working with. So what I'm going to do first is grab my standard. Uh, so I've got two technically, but I'm going to grab this one to start my company shared parameters. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab one that uh, was exported out of a project file uh, here, project A. And then you hit compare. There's this little checkbox here to generate a report. And what it does is it just kind of gives you this uh text window that you know effectively lists everything that you see in the background here uh but in a in a format where you can easily copy it to the clipboard and paste it into excel or to a word file or into notepad to be saved and used elsewhere uh, in this case and this is the full complete list of everything that it found i don't need that here i'm just looking at this i want to see what's going on so right now, uh, the company shared parameter file that I have versus what came out of this project, they are 100% unique. There's no common, there's no duplicates. There's nothing uh, similar between either file. So it, it appears that these two came from completely different places, right? So to me, that's uh, concerning, if, especially if one of them came out of my project and the other one was my company standard, right? That, that, that would be alarming. And now we're juggling two different parameter files with different stuff in it. And these should be consolidated into one piece. Now I'm gonna mix this up a bit. I'm gonna change 
to a different parameter file for my master and compare these two and to get a slightly different look here. So now we've got uh, common parameters here. It found one, view classification. It's shared amongst both files, okay? Which is, which is great, you know? Now, the whole point here is just to show you that it will track down and find what is similar. Now, ideally, if this actually came out of my project and my shared parameter file, I should have a whole bunch of common parameters and, you know, cause they, we should be using the same files here. So I'm gonna try one more comparison here just to see what's going on. I'm gonna switch it to project B along with my CTC master. Now we've got new messaging popping up. We've got conflicts. The conflicts here lets me know that I've got the same named parameters here. In this case, I've got a GUID mismatch. So the, the key, the parameters, um, uh, unique identifier, they're different, which means if I had content in this project B referencing its height, depth, length, and width parameters, and then I built a new family using those same parameters, but referenced them for my shared parameter file, and then loaded it into project B, they would not schedule consistently and things wouldn't work very well at all. So at, at the very least, what this has done is identified the problem. And now I know, now I can make the fix. Whether that's opening up the project and checking to see what's there, getting rid of the family, or you know, using another one of our tools to swap things out and do some replacements. Which I will point out briefly here in a minute. So again, great way to compare things that are going on. All right. Now let's say. I've identified uh, a scenario where I've got parameters in one file that I need in my file. That's where the merge shared parameters tab comes into play. So if I wanna take parameters from project A and bring them into my master, I can do that. And now this has, Remember from the previous tab, there was nothing common amongst these two, right? They were completely free. So if you want, you can merge them together. And what this will do right now is if I hit merge, it's gonna tell me if it had any issues trying to merge those two together. So what it's doing is it's telling me it's brought in these groups over here and what ID values that has what parameters that were officially imported across, and if there were any conflicts at the end of the day when this was complete. And if I'm happy with that, I can hit save merged results down here and append the merged prefix or a suffix here at the end, just so that I know that this is the new one, this is the updated one. And if I just, it's for you know tracking purposes, right? Uh, I personally would do this just so I know the differences between the two. And then when I go replace this one on my network with the, what my master was, I will adjust the versioning on that file to archive it and then rename this one back so that it doesn't say merged anymore. Um, so now uh, what the, the, the parameter files that I got here were created in a couple of different ways. Uh, one of them uh, that I didn't show you guys this, but one of the files that was there uh, came from the door manufacturer that built a bunch of door families that we use, right? So they were gracious enough to and send me their shared parameters file, and I just renamed it Call It Doors. Project A and Project B are parameter files that I exported out of a project uh, using one of our other BIM manager suite tools called Share Parameter Manager. 
uh, I was able to export all of the shared parameters from a project to build a new parameter file so that now I can com compare the two together. Um, and you know, a lot of what I just showed you here with comparing and merging of parameter files uh, can be done in a much more elegant interface and a little bit more powerful tool in Shared Parameter Manager. Um, it is also a paid tool, so it can actually do more than what Family Tools is doing. Um, this is pretty crude, uh, but it gets you access to the data. Shared Parameter Manager is the would be the go-to if you owned a copy of this. Uh, that's where I would do all of my comparing and merging of parameter data and exporting from projects and all the good stuff. And then turning around and loading back into projects or into families. Yeah, there's a whole lot more that this tool can do. Uh, watch the video that we put up on YouTube. All right, so merging of parameter files is good. We did it. I saved, well, I don't think I did save it. I'll save it. Thank you. Now it's done. And there you have it. Now I've got my merged copy. And what I would, like I was alluding to, I would go ahead and rename this. Oops. Uh, to date, you know, to date the date that it was archived, for example, right? Uh, what day is today? The 25th, that's right. And then uh, this one, I will take merged off. And now I've updated everything and we're good to go. That's, that's kind of how I would do it. Or I would put in, you know, maybe archived and then the date, something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so finally, the last tab that we have here uh, is the family file version detector. So if, if you're ever curious, if, you, if you're building a library together and you, never really paid attention to the versions or you know you're pulling content from projects and you know you don't really know where things came from or who built it or what version it was made in all you know is that it worked for that one project file and you're trying to consolidate and put things together this is just a great way to get a quick idea as to what you're dealing with uh especially if you're about to go through a content upgrade process and you want to ballpark how long it might take you or you know, you're having issues with the family. You're trying to wonder why, and you, so we can check it real quick to see what version it would come up that it's in. So I can browse to my parent folder, which would be the top level of your library, right? So in my case here, I will just grab the family files folder that I have, hit OK, and at, at first glance, it's giving me some basic information about the content itself. Now, because I've consolidated some of this stuff, I, I don't have all the data information here that you see, that you would normally see, but I get the file name, the last save date effectively would be the build date found and what the actual family name is. So we've got the file path and name or the full name and the short name, which is really just the file name. Uh, that we're used to seeing and if i want to know what the version is i have to click the button down here detect the version so by doing that it's going to scan through all the families and list them out for me so i'm i should have stuff kind of across the board at this point uh look at that we got 2017 2020 2015 good lord uh 23 and 2016 even so i've got some really old content here that i'm still working with and now i know that i've got some old content and i got a little bit of work to do chances are this content doesn't work very well in my schedules either and i have to do some updating on that front um or in a project file for that you know so or maybe these aren't being used at all now i can just delete them Right, it's, it's they're so old and no one's talked about them. Do we even really need them at this point? Right, so maybe I can do some additional cleanup here as well. Uh, now, at the same time, 
there is a way like so for example i know all of these 2023 families right these are in my current version i'm good to go i don't need to check these again you can actually select a, any fan any thing in this list and uh delete them from this window and it won't show them to you here anymore it's not going to delete the source it's just you know they will no longer be processed is effectively what it's telling you meaning it's and it's too late now because i've already done detected the version but it won't look for that revit version if you know that those families are good and maybe you just don't know that right because they're all kind of consolidated into one location but if you did know you could uncheck that or delete them from this list and not worry about deleting them from the network Alrighty, and that brings us to the end of it. So if you don't have our tools and you would like to get our tools, I can help you with that. Um, our, if you go to our website at ctcsoftware.com, and I'm gonna pull this up for you real quick. We have a products page. So you can go to ctcsoftware.com forward slash products, or you can just come here uh, and select the BIM manager suite. And from the BIM manager suite, you have the ability to set up or register for a trial and download. It's good for 14 days. And then you have access to the entire suite. If you're just looking for family tools and some of the other free ones out there, you get it forever. You, you don't have to worry about uh the license and or the trial expiring those tools are yours once you've installed it they're yours and free to go if you would like some more information about family tools and any other tool in the bin manager suite you can go to our youtube channel uh youtube slash ctc software and find all kinds of videos about our tools or you, alternatively uh you can click the videos button from within any of our tools and it will, you will be brought to a playlist uh, featuring that tool, and then you can browse whatever's left. All righty. Well, that concludes the presentation for today. So I want to thank you all for joining me. It's been a pleasure. We look forward to having you guys here every week and look forward to seeing you guys next week when we'd have kickoff. Uh, a, a series of webinars focusing on a specific topic. So I look forward to seeing you guys there next week.